I only like the most glamorous things, you know? I work hard so that I can afford the best, you know? That's what it's all about. It's not about the things, though. It's about the possibility and the ability to acquire the things, right? I mean... Yeah, it's not about... Because at the end of the day, it's just stuff, you know? That's true. It's just stuff, which I have a lot of, but it's not the... That's not the message. But also like you were saying earlier when you were talking about being tired and just being so blessed with opportunities. Yeah. Like being a trailblazer for so many people. You just gotta do it. Oh my god, that was so nice. It's yeah, it's just, you know, you work, you, you work until you just really can't work anymore. You know, and hopefully that doesn't happen to me for a very, very long time. Okay. <clears throat> you know, I think people get caught up in the lifestyle and what and be and become validated mm -hmm. by the stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's again, that's not what it's about. You know. Very true. Like nobody really needs a thousand dollar pair of shoes. You don't really need it. A shoe is pretty much gonna do the same thing, protect your feet when you walk, you know. But sure. the feeling and emotion that that gives you is something mm -hmm. different, you know. It's an experience to go mm -hmm. somewhere and buy a thousand dollar shoe because the way they package it and the way they treat you, you know what I mean? Like and the dust bag that it comes in. And the dust bag <laughs> and the little envelope with the bow on it. You know what I mean? Like it's part of the experience. It makes you feel mm -hmm. good. Unless it makes I mean, but it makes me feel good. I think that's you know? what Oprah said once. She said the only difference between me then and me now is I just have better shoes. Yeah. It's the truth. It's the truth. And I'm thankful. So happy. I wake up every morning with the attitude of gratitude and say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because, you know, this ain't always the way I was living, you know. I'm able to have good hair. And look Asian, pretty skin, you know what I mean? Like, we can start out that way. Yeah. I'm so happy. So I guess we should kind of like explain what well, we're getting glam for the Hollywood Reporter's 25 most powerful Hollywood stylist issue dinner. What? <laughs> yeah. And I was so lucky and so honored to be put on that list this year. Um, it's my first year. Um, yeah. And, and as you know. Just feel with emotion, you know, just to be recognized by the by the industry, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. as one of the best, you know. I think I've always wanted to be considered I think we all wanna be considered one of the best no matter what right. it is we do. You know what I mean? Like when you're passionate. When you're passionate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. So you know, it is what it is. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Not actually it's a crazy story. Rosalind, mm -hmm. have me that magazine really quick. I think it's on my bed. I look so beautiful, don't I? You do. Thank you. It always takes a man to make you feel beautiful, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all hosts don't tell me anything. <laughs> you need a man to say it. <laughs> so, great story, and I'll tell you how powerful the law of attraction is. So. When I was just coming to LA mm -hmm. and kind of trying to pursue this um, this career full time, you know, like it was the all that I was gonna do. I bought this, not even really knowing what it was, you know what I mean? But I saw the tagline and I was just like, that will be me one day. You know what I mean? Like, and it's so funny because I've moved a couple of times and about two months ago, mm -hmm. this, I moved some things on my nightstand and it was there. So, subconsciously, it was always close to me. It well, scary. physically it was always close to me, but some way in my mind, like, I was, have always been working towards this mm -hmm. without, you know what I mean? Like, without being obvious about it working towards it. You know, it was there. Mm -hmm. The power of visualization mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. the power of putting something in the universe and sending a request and just waiting for it to come. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't know how I was going to get here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't know what my clients what I would have, I wouldn't, didn't know I would have an amazing year, you know, I didn't know that my work would be considered transformational. Mm -hmm. Is that a word? It is today. Transformational. Is that a real word? If it's not, then you understand what I mean. But that's, that's powerful. That is powerful. 
You know what I mean? I didn't know. I knew her, but I didn't know her. Like, she's the stylist. I didn't know who Michaela was, but I just knew that she had something that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I never was like, oh, I'm going to devise this plan and, you know, I'm going to do this for six months. And, like, you don't have to know how to get there. You mm -hmm. just got to know where you want to go. Right. And when I, when I pulled this from under a stack of other things, I was just like, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. But it's, it's, it's because it's for you. You know. I put it out and now and then I get the call and it's like, you know, you consider blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, it's always been right by me. Look at the March 2014. That's crazy. You know, almost exactly three years ago. That's huge. You know? And that's huge. It's so fucking powerful. Yeah. It's so powerful. And it's always like, how could you not believe this? You know what I mean? Like, I want people to know, like, this is the way I live my life. This is the way I think. This is the way I wake up every single day knowing that I have a purpose mm -hmm. and I am, um, and my purpose is to be great and do amazing things and be successful and live in abundance. Mm -hmm. Like I think people get really caught up in um, feeling a certain way that they, they, they want to live in abundance. They're like, oh, I shouldn't ask for, I shouldn't want to have 1200 mm -hmm. pairs of shoes. Why not? If that's what you want, right. you know what I mean? Like that's if that's what you want, it's, you shouldn't be ashamed of that. Right. You know, and I think it's a, a Bible scripture that talks about that, you know, just when you think about the way people with great minds thought, everybody has the same, the same thought process. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody wants to struggle. Nobody wants to live from check to check. They just have to know that it's possible not to. Right. Like, I came from shit. Nothing. I've been, a, you know, living in abandoned houses. Been Anything that you could think about that could have happened to me, happened to me. And I don't have any scars. You know what I mean? Nobody owes me anything for happen what happened to me. It was always... Move, work, yeah. work, work, work. You know what I mean? I know that's easier said than done for a lot of people, but it's my story, you know? But this is the thing, it's not an act for me. This is how I believe. And I want everybody around me to believe the same way. Like, I want to be around all fucking winners. But you have never wavered since the day. No, and I won't. Like, and I won't because this is a milestone, but now it has to be something else. Mm -hmm. It always has to be something else. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it, it just has to be something else. It's always something else, like... I was asked the question, um, you know, why didn't you ever change your, your Instagram handle back to just Law Roach? You know what I mean? Like, luxury law seems so flossy and whatever. But again, it goes back to what I said. It's not about the stuff. Right. You know, it's aspirational. Mm -hmm. It's aspirational for me to fly private with my clients. You know what I mean? Like, it's aspirational because what that makes me want to do is I want to work until I can do that. Yes. And... The people that work for me can fly with me mm -hmm. and do that so that it becomes an effect, you know, a cause and effect where they're inspired and they work harder. Because it's it's not impossible. No, it's not. Like people invent shit every day and make billions of dollars. So Why makes anybody any different? You know what I mean? It's just just believing that you can. But I also think, you know, like you said. You work hard to be able to have a tribe of people that you can be a blessing to. The intention, when you have an intention, yeah, that is to be able to touch so many people. Yeah, and that's what vessel. And that's what it, that's what's most important about me. I don't think it's really about me tonight, but it's just so many people that look like me. Mm -hmm. um, that the more I, the more I'm out, and the more people just like, oh my god, you inspire me. Like, I want to be like you. I just think that it just be, became like something strong. Mm -hmm. You know, like now now I feel like I. I owe people things. Like, I'm not contributing any money or anything to nobody, but I will give you love and, you know, this knowledge. We're not writing no checks. <laughs> not today. Not yet. And then you're going to get to a point where a check isn't going to be nothing. Yeah. No, I still ain't writing no checks. <laughs> <laughs> you teach them how to fish, you don't give them a fish, okay? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, dude. But no, you... It's, it's, it's powerful because I'm from the south side of Chicago, you know, like I'm. It's real life over here. It's real. Like people who I know are dying. You know what I mean? Like because people have no hope. And that's even if one person sees this, they have no hope. Or sees the magazine and just like shit, he's from where I'm from. Right. You know what I mean? Like even if that one person sees that, then I've I've done something. You know what I mean? Like he, I don't even have to know that it changed him. Mm -hmm. If it did, like you know, the universe will find a way for me to be rewarded. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I think that's really really important and I'm going to continue to be luxury law and I'm going to continue to 
teach people how to find the value in themselves because that's what it means to me. Yeah. I am a luxury good. Yeah. You know Ooh. what I mean? I am. <laughs> but I love that. It's true. Luxury good. It is true. Yeah. I am no different from a Bentley, <laughs> a Chanel bag. 100%. Like, I'm a size. No one needs a stylist. It's yeah. a luxury. So why do I let you, why would I let you take my value? So when you click on my page or you hear my name, you people are gonna say luxury law, and I want that to trigger something mm -hmm. to let you know like I, I, I walk into the room with a certain amount of value, mm -hmm. and nobody's gonna take that away from me, you know. And I think, and you could probably attest to this, like in this industry, people are so um, people are so not stressed but eager to have a good opportunity, yeah, and they lose themselves. Yeah. And they and they come into this industry with no value. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you a story. So when I was first, you know, dibbling this in Chicago, it was this girl who did makeup. Mm -hmm. And like we would see each other on little shoots. Like we were doing little stuff. You know what I mean? Like sometimes like something for a hair company or something. You know, just getting my feet wet. Mm -hmm. And one day I saw her. I was like, you know, what's coming up next for you? And she's like, I'm moving home. And I was like, why? And she was like, I became the $75 girl. So what she meant by that is that she had done so many jobs for so many people and great work, but every time somebody recommended her for something, they would tell her, oh, we only pay her $75. So what happened was everybody else was like, well, if they paid you $75, I'm gonna pay you $75. And then she couldn't maintain. She was doing all this work, but she was the $75 girl. But if she was like me, and I said I'm better anyway, but if she was like me and knew her value and knew her worth, mm -hmm. she wouldn't have been a 75 girl. And she probably would be one of the biggest makeup artists around right now. Mm -hmm. Or she would probably be in the Hollywood Reporter for the beauty issue. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. but you have, we have to, especially as, as artists of color, we yeah. have to. That's one thing I remember about you is that our first job together. I remember us having some sort of conversation about the client and their budget and this and that. And they were like, well, law is too expensive. And you were like, well, child, I'd rather be too expensive too than, than, than yeah. too cheap. Because everything's not for me. If I really, if I wake up and I believe what's for me is for me and no one can take that away from me, then what it is. Now, I'm not a snob about it. Like, oh, no, you can't afford me. But if I'm mentioning the conversations, I want people to know he's good and he's worth whatever his right. rates are. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But all that to say is... But on the flip side of that, if it's something I believe in... Well, of course. Because I think that was the client you believed yeah, in. Yeah. If it's somebody so, I believe in, then yes, I'm going to do it for whatever they got because I believe it. I feel like I can add value to them and vice sure. versa. You for know? Sure. So, it's... But I will not be taken advantage of. Of course that you I will. That I tell you right, right of away. Of course you will. Yeah. Today is the corner of the I'm not gonna change. I love that. Yeah, like I'm hood, kind of. I'm like, I'm like, what do you say it? Like, I'm like a high class hood rat. You know. Yeah, but no, I really, I really love that I've been able to maintain my truth in this industry, and I and I thank the Hollywood Reporter for seeing that and and giving me this amazing honor because, you know, I'm just a little boy or a girl, depending on how I feel sometimes, and there's nothing wrong with that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, that, you know, that came from nothing and, you know, it's still on the rise and still trying to be able to give other people opportunities and, you know, so we'll see. Onward and upward. Yeah. Contour. Do you see my room? It's vintage. I'm gonna stand up and walk for you. It's amazing. It's very luxurious. <laughs> this is the way I like to feel when I wake up and have my orange juice and read my, you know, fashion news. I like to do it in this because it makes me feel extravagant. Um, you know, and it makes me feel like slightly like Rihanna from a Met. I just saw the fur now. Oh, girl, how did you miss that? Oh, damn. That's, so the first That's the most important part. How did you miss that? Alright, oh, get yourself face. together. Thank you so kind to dress me tonight. Okay, am I done? Mm -hmm. Alright, ladies. Okay.
So tell me about this robe. I'm really, really intrigued. It's amazing. I mean, <laughs> it's simple. You see it. It's beautiful. Like, what do you mean? Look at that. Can you talk about what you're wearing, who you're wearing? I am um, so blessed to be dressed by my friends at Vivian Westwood and Jimmy Chu. They were very great. I'm so happy. I love it. I love the look. Shut up. <laughs>